of coming across a pastor, whether on TV or in church, who is so full of himself that he seems to think that he sits at the right hand of God. <laughs> now, he probably started out well, preaching the word of God with a genuine desire to see souls saved. You see, God gave him a gift that he's using for the express purpose of leading others to Jesus Christ. But somewhere along the way, it went to his head. And now he thinks so highly of himself that he's forgotten the source of his gifts and the end goal, the final cause of his ministry and his existence. A similar tendency can also be seen in government. The American government was created to facilitate the well-being of its citizens. But a government is also made up of people. And as time has passed, our political leaders have begun to see themselves as the source of welfare rather than as simply the conduit. It's human nature. As humans, we have this tendency to focus on what we can do rather than the source of our abilities. Pastors and politicians both fall prey to this temptation far more easily because they're in the public eye. But it's a characteristic of human nature to focus inward on oneself rather than outward on the objective. So to be no surprise that this is exactly what has happened in the modern university. The university of today is focused on monetary return. Students want a return on their investment. They want something concrete for the time they've invested, for the student loans they've taken out, and the energy they've expended over these four years. The goal, therefore, becomes job placement. The university is no longer anything more than a means to an end producing vocationally trained graduates rather than better people. In the modern mind, the university is the source of rather than an avenue to truth. Education is so important because it is what shapes the next generation. A society is made up of people, and if those people are not properly educated, the society will suffer. The health of a society is determined not by talent, but by the virtue of its people. Aristotle argues in the Nicomachean Ethics that virtue must be encouraged and cultivated in a people in order to produce a thriving society. But what is the university's actual duty in all of this? Merriam-Webster defines duty as functions that arise from a position or a moral obligation. The university's position in society is that of educator. It's where people go to learn. The duty of the university, then, is to produce in its students better members of society by teaching them to ask the right questions, how to think, and to pursue truth. One aspect of being a virtuous person is approaching life well. How does one do this? By asking the right questions. Teaching someone to do this is not a simple task by any means, but the first step is to understand that it is not up to the university to teach students what to think, but how to think. Again, it's about keeping the focus on the transcendent goal rather than the physical conduit. The university is not the truth. Rather, it is what leads people to the truth by showing them how to get there. This, of course, reminds us of Plato's Socratic dialogues. Socrates was an expert at asking the right question at the right time pushing his students forward toward truth. Most of the time, they would end up in a state of aporia, or a confusion caused by a seemingly insoluble impasse. But this still served the end of truth by showing the students that they had not yet arrived and still had a ways to go. In order to ask the right questions, we must simply know how to think. This is taught by means of Socratic logic. The logician is one who knows how to think rationally, to identify logical fallacies, and to reason from premises to conclusions. Logic orders the mind, showing the student how to have a clear view of his thoughts and ideas. Further, a student must have a full view of the world. This is taught by way of a liberal arts education. In the words of the Roman poet Ovid, a faithful study of the liberal arts humanizes a liberal education gives the student a connected view of the world, allowing his thoughts and opinions to be informed 
face various facets of knowledge. A single study, a single path of study, cannot serve the end of humanizing the character of a student and showing him how to perceive things as they are. In the study of the liberal arts, in the study of the great books, Plato's Republic, Homer's Iliad, Shakespeare's plays, and Hobbes' Leviathan, to name just a few. These are the ideas that have stood the test of time, the thoughts that we have read and discussed for centuries. In the words of Aristotle, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. It is the duty of the university, then, to present to its students, as part of their liberal arts education, conflicting views, to teach them how to think about opposing views. All this being said, a university is not inherently great because of its curriculum. Rather, it fulfills its duty in how it teaches its students how to think and to engage the world. John Henry Newman, an icon of 19th century English religious history, writes in the idea of the university that knowledge is capable of being its own end. Knowledge does something in us and has been proven to move people across both time and space Commitment to an idea has been the driving force behind every political and social movement throughout history. It is what drove the American revolutionaries to rebel against England. It gave Martin Luther King Jr. the strength and the energy to fight for civil rights in the face of violent opposition. And it is the fire in the belly of every Muslim extremist around the world today. This final example shows us that a pursuit of truth does not necessarily lead to the truth due to a problem with the questions asked along the way. Newman asks, if consistency of view can add so much strength, even to error, what may it not be expected to furnish to the dignity, to the energy, to the influence of truth? A commitment to and a pursuit of truth is invaluable, and it is the university's duty to facilitate We've been talking a lot about truth, but at a Christian university, we must also consider where God fits into the equation. Thomas Aquinas argues in the Summa Theologica that the end of the university, its final cause, is God. Therefore, everything about the university must be oriented toward this pursuit. C.S. Lewis, in his Learning in Wartime speech, says, that the intellectual life is not the only road to God, nor the safest, but we find it to be a road, and it may be the appointed one for us. God is not just something to be studied by theologians and pastors. All of creation speaks to who he is. Aquinas goes even one step further. In disputed questions on truth, he argues that since God is the source of human reason, it is God himself who is our teacher and instructs us from within. In the words drawn from Augustine, all truth is God's truth. Therefore, a correct pursuit of truth will inevitably lead to God. In pointing students to truth, by teaching them how to think rather than what to think, the university, sometimes without even meaning to, leads its students to God. He is the ultimate transcendent truth and the only thing that can truly restore our society.